All right, well, good morning, everyone. It is uh, great to be with you today. Today we are reading uh, Malachi chapters 3 and 4. If you remember, the uh, the Israelite people, they have returned from exile. And um, after returning from exile from Babylon, they've rebuilt the temple. And But it was within... Uh, you know, just uh, the middle part of the next century and the people had already, uh, you know, started returning to their ways, the very things that caused them to go into exile in the first place. And so Malachi is prophesying against them and uh, just warning them that uh, that they needed to uh, to walk with God and they needed to do, you know, what God had required of them, you know, as the children of Israel. And uh, so uh, let's go ahead and, and uh, continue on. And um, yeah, just make our way through the rest of Malachi. It's really a, a powerful book. All right. And so um, chapter two ended with verse um, 17, where it says, but um, <clears throat> 17 and 18, you have wearied the Lord with your words. How have we wearied him? You ask by saying all who do evil are good in the eyes of the Lord and he's pleased with them or where is the God of justice? And so, you know, again, you know, we we live in such a day, you know, where where we have people that uh, that even though they're doing evil, even though they're living apart from the Lord, we have such confusion in the land where people are like, well, you know, they're still they're good people, you know, and we're so confused. I mean, people are confused over Hamas, uh, you know, doing this wicked thing and and um, bombing Israel and uh, mur murdering babies and um you know, and even even right after that happened, people were like, well, you know, and, and so it's just we have a confused, confused world uh, when it comes to the issue of, of sin. And uh, so he says, I will send my messenger who will prepare the way before me. Uh, then suddenly the Lord you are seeking will come to his temple. The messenger of the covenant whom you desire will come, says the Lord Almighty. But who can endure the day of his coming? Who can stand when he appears? For he will be like a refiner's fire or a launderer's soap. He will sit as a refiner and purifier of silver. He will purify the Levites and refine them like gold and silver. Then the Lord will have men who will bring offerings in righteousness. And the offerings of Judah and Jerusalem will be acceptable to the Lord as in days gone by, as in former years. So I will come to put, to put you on trial. I will be quick to testify against sorcerers, adulterers, and perjurers against those who defraud laborers of their wages, who oppress the widows and the fatherless, and deprive the foreigners among you of justice. But do not fear me, says the Lord Almighty. <clears throat> I, the Lord, do not change. So you, the descendants of Jacob, are not destroyed. Ever since the time of your ancestors, you have turned away from my decrees and have not kept them. Return to me, and I will return to you, says the Lord Almighty. But you ask, how are we to return? Will a mere man, will a mere mortal rob God? Yet you rob me. But you ask, how are we robbing you? In tithes and offerings. You are under a curse, your whole nation, because you are robbing me. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. I will prevent pests from devouring your crops and the vines in your fields will not drop their fruit before it is ripe, says the Lord Almighty. Then all the nations will call you blessed for yours will be a delightful land, says the Lord Almighty. <clears throat> you have spoken arrogantly against me, says the Lord. Yet you ask, what have we said against you? You have said it is futile to serve God. What do we gain by carrying out his requirements and going about like mourners before the Lord Almighty? But now we call the arrogant blessed. Certainly evildoers prosper, and even when they put God to the test, they get away with it. Then those who feared the Lord talked with each other, and the Lord listened and heard. A scroll of remembrance was written in his presence concerning those who feared the Lord and honored his name. On the day when I act, says the Lord Almighty, they will be my treasured possession. I will spare them. Just as a father has compassion and spares his son who serves him, and you will see again the distinct see you again see the distinction between the righteous and the wicked, between those who serve God and those who don't. 
chapter four, surely the day is coming. It will burn like a furnace. All the arrogant and evil, every evildoer will be stubble. And the day that is coming will set them on fire, says the Lord Almighty. Not a root or a branch will be left to them. But for you who revere my name, the son of righteousness will rise with healing in its rays. And you will go out and frolic like well-fed calves. Then you will trample on the wicked. They will be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day when I act, says the Lord Almighty. Remember the law of my servant Moses, the decrees and laws I gave him at Horeb for all Israel. <clears throat> See, I will send the prophet Elijah to you before that great and dreadful day of the Lord, the, the day the Lord comes. He will turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the hearts of the children to their parents, or else I will come and strike the land with total destruction. All right. So, you know, really kind of a synopsis there at the, at that last part, um, you know, God's calling his people back to him. He's calling them to, to return, to repent, to stop robbing him, um, to stop offering uh, fire that is worthless because they are living in sin. So he's asking them to stop going through just the form, the form of your religion, and not really faith, being faithful in, in all your ways. And one of the ways that they were being unfaithful was in their, in their offerings, their tithes and offerings. They were robbing God of that and God notices. And so he calls them out on that. And then, and then, you know, I, I love this. There's a faithful remnant of people. And he says, then those who fear the Lord, right? They talked with each other and the Lord listened and the Lord heard. You realize that when God, when, when you're even talking amongst yourselves, when we're talking amongst ourselves, God is listening and hearing. And they came to a decision that we were going to serve the Lord. We're going to, we're not going to rob God of his tithes. We're going to make sure that we are being faithful to our, our spouses. We're not going to intermarry uh, with pagan nations. We're going to make sure that we are, are being faithful in all of our ways. I mean, these things that God, you know, God, God calls them out on and they decide, okay, we're going to do this. And what's amazing is a scroll of remembrance was written in his presence concerning those who feared the Lord and honored his name. So there was this scroll where they wrote it down and said, this is our covenant. This is our commitment. This is our testimony. This is what we're doing. Okay. We're not going to deviate from it. And I love what God says. You know what? On the day that I act on the day of judgment, um, I'm, everything is going to be, the heat is going to be turned up like a, in a furnace, but you will be saved. There's this scroll of remembrance and with, with God's people. You realize that that if you have made a covenant, if you've made a covenant with God and you've said, you know, God, I want to serve you wholeheartedly with all my heart, and I'm going to do this, there's been a scroll scroll of remembrance that's been that's been rolled up, that's got your name on it. That when he unrolls it in the day of the fire fiery furnace, he's going to unroll it and he's going to see, okay, yeah, there is there is his name, there's her name. She she's one of the remnant. He's one of the remnant. And, and as I turn up the, the heat in the furnace uh, to, to destroy the wicked, I'm going to preserve him. I'm going to preserve her. I'm going to protect them. I'm going to bless them. That's what God says. And uh, so pretty awesome, isn't it? I, I just I love Malachi. It's such a powerful book. You know, and, and in, in that end day, he says, again, verse 18, this is a, a big one that throughout the Old Testament, you see this. Um, <clears throat> You see this reality. He says, again, you will see the distinction between the righteous and the wicked, between those who serve God and those who don't. You know, it's not going to be a mere matter of talk. We'll see the di distinction between the two because there is truly a distinction between the two. And uh, in this day that we live in, people have a tough time seeing that. But I hope that you don't. And I need to make sure that I don't. I need to to be able to distinguish between what is wicked and what is righteous. Okay. So um, that's a part of discernment. We need to understand that we need to be able to discern whether or not a person is truly living for Christ and not. And uh, we need to be, you know, have, have a, a, this thing settled in our heart that you can know. And, and uh, we easily can know if a person is truly following Christ. Okay. All right, well, let's jump over now to uh, to Isaiah 55. Uh, first of all, congratulations on finishing up the book of Malachi. That's pretty incredible. Uh, we have one more book in the Bible to read through, and we will be 
done reading through the Bible for the year. And uh, that's an incredible accomplishment. All right, so let's jump over Isaiah 55. This is the invitation to the thirsty. Okay, come, come, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters. And you who have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why spend money on what is not bread and your labor on what does not satisfy? Listen, listen to me and eat what is good and you will delight in the richest affair. Give ear and come to me. Listen that you may live. I will make an everlasting covenant with you. My faithful love promised to David. See, I've made him a witness to the peoples, a ruler and a commander of the peoples. Surely you will summon nations you not know not and nations you do not know will come running to you because of the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel. For he has endowed you with splendor. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. <clears throat> Let the wicked forsake their thoughts and their unrighteous their thoughts. Let them turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on them and to our God, for he will freely pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are my ways, and neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. Um, as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven, and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater, so is my word that goes out from my mouth, it will not return to me empty, but I will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. You will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and hills will burst into song before you and all the trees of the field will clap their hands. Instead of the thorn bush will grow the juniper. Instead of briars, the myrtle will grow. This will be for the Lord's renown for an everlasting sign that will endure forever. <laughs> what an incredible psalm. Right. I just I love it. You know, go seek the Lord. <clears throat> he says, seek the Lord. We need to seek the Lord. Amen. We need to seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he's near because he's here. He's draw near to God and he'll draw near you. The scripture says uh, if you if, if you got wickedness in your heart, forsake it. So let the wicked forsake their ways and the unrighteous, their thoughts. A lot of this is in the thought in the, in the thought realm. Even, you know, God, we need to we need to to turn to God even in our thinking, okay? And let them turn to the Lord and he'll have mercy on us. Turn to God and he'll freely pardon. That's an incredible, what an offer God gives to us. He offers to us a pardon from all our sin, so long as we really truly turn to him. And and um, <clears throat> I love this comparison. God says, listen, as, as high as the heavens you know, are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts than your thoughts. And so he's telling us, turn from your way, turn to mine, turn from your evil thoughts, turn to mine, because there's such a huge difference, such a huge gap between my thoughts and my ways and his thoughts and his ways. Amy and I, we were talking about this yesterday, this, this, how do we, how do we help people comprehend their sin? You know, and, and think, and, and if you, because sometimes we kind of categorize our sin and, oh, you know, this, I really am not that bad, you know, I'm not murdered and that type of thing, but, but his ways are so higher than our ways, you know, any gap between his holiness and our unrighteousness, it is a mam. it's, it is a, it is a, it's the Grand Canyon and beyond. He's so holy. And, and so think of the most vile thing you could think of, the most vile smell that you just can't stand. I mean, just, just the worst thing possible. Your smallest sin is, is probably, you know, a thousand times more foul smelling in the eyes of a holy God than what you could, than what the worst smell you could comprehend. So the thing that make you the sickest, the gr just the grossest thing, thing your your smallest sin, you, you know of what you would consider small, to God, it's revolting. That's how holy He is. It 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 turns a stu it's disgusting. So what we consider, you know, just, well, it's just a small sin. It's just a no. Your your ways and my ways are are so far away from the holiness of God. There is no wickedness in him whatsoever. 
and and uh, he it it's his our sin repels him and thank God for Jesus who came and paid the penalty of our sin but but then we we begin to be remade in the in the in our thoughts and in, in our lives and in, in the holiness and, and begin to live and conform our lives to God because he he doesn't want us living with those rank things in our lives anymore he doesn't want us living with those those vile things in our hearts and our lives anymore. He wants to remake us in, into his image and in, into the original image that we were created. And so God calls us to that. And, and a part of that is recognizing how far we are off the mark. Why? So that we can begin to make adjustments. You know, like when, when I shoot at a target, whether it's with my, my bow or shooting with a gun, you know, when I shoot at the target, and and I see that I'm off, then I've got to go back and I've got to make an adjustment to to uh, you know to my uh, of my sights. I got to move my sights. I've got to move my, my either my scope or my sights on my bow, and I got to make an adjustment so that from now on when I shoot, I'm I'm shooting at the bullseye. And that's what God's God's calling us to do is is that that through Him now we we gain wisdom through Him we gave. We gain an accurate, an accurate sight so that we can begin to adjust and we can begin to kind of really hone in on the target of, of who we've really been created to be. And so that's why he says that we, we, we need to, to, you know, be sanctified. We need to surrender our whole selves. We need to, you know, turn away from those things that are, are off the target and, and get on the target to who God's called us to be. And we can do that so long as we live in the spirit. We have the spirit of God to convict us, to lead us, to guide us, to make sure that we're on target. Well, I hope that you're on target today. I hope that you're making adjustments. And and uh, because and this is not this is not just a human endeavor. This is an endeavor that we are in with God. You know, so it's not like we're left on our own. We have the word of God where he speaks to us. We have the Holy Spirit that leads us and guides us. And uh, we have brothers and sisters who are there to help us as well, recognize what the target is and to stay, stay, you know, um, on, on cart, on course, on target. And so um, I hope that you will, let's listen, if you're not on target in any area of your life, now it's time to start making the adjustment. Get, get targeted in and begin to, and, and, and begin to live differently, shoot differently, because God's got something better for you. He's got a bullseye. He's got a bullseye that leads to, that leads to, you know, this, this glory that leads to, you know, a better life that, that leads to God's blessing. And, and uh, we want God's blessing. All right. So, well, let's pray together. Congratulations again on finishing up the book of Malachi. Man, I'm so excited. And uh, now we get to jump into the book of Revelation. We get to finish out strong, looking at the the, the churches and, and uh, just learning from them. And uh, so I'm looking forward to this. Let's pray together. Father, thank you so much. God, would you help us to to recognize in those places where, where uh, you know, your thoughts are different than our thoughts, where your ways are different than our ways. God, where the target, we've been missing it. And Lord, where we need to make adjustments, God, in the way that we live, in the way we think, in the way that we speak in the way that we uh, you know, live towards others, in the way that we you know, handle um, you know, our tithes and offerings, God, in the way that we, everything that we do, God, help us, Lord, help me, help me, help me to be a man of God. Help me to be a man of God. Help me to be a husband that you want me to be. Help me to be a father, a, a pastor, the way that you want me to be. Lord, I, I know that there are, there've gotta be ways and, and times that, that I miss the target, Lord, and I don't wanna miss the target. And so, Holy Spirit, um, I need your help. I need you to help to hit uh, to hit the bullseye, God, uh, because your ways are not my ways. Your thoughts are not my thoughts. And there are times when I get off off the target. And, and Lord, um, you know, please forgive me, God, and help me help me to be the the person that you want me to be, the person you created me to be. And Father, I pray that the same for for those who are reading with me today, uh, God. We we admit that there are so many times when we. And when we miss the target, we miss the bullseye and, and our aim is so far off. And Lord, I pray that you would help each one to see where those areas are and God, that we would um, repent of those areas, that we would ask you for forgiveness, but also ask you, God, to help us to realign, 
to realign our, our thoughts, or to realign our ways, uh, to, to line up God with you, uh, with your holiness and who you want us to be. And so, Lord, we thank you, God, for uh, just your word, Lord, that, that leads us. Your word is a, a, a lamp unto our feet and a, and a light to our path, God. And, and God, we thank you for that. We thank you that while we walk in this dark world, Lord, we need your lamp and we need your light so that we'll follow you and not the ways of this world, because the ways of this world are so confusing. And we have so many people around us that are like, no, this is right. This is right. And Lord, we, we recognize, God, that that's darkness. It's trying to pull us in and to follow the ways of darkness. But God, help us to walk in the ways of light, to walk in the light as you're in the light, Lord. And uh, Father, you tell us that if we walk in the light as you're in the light, that we'll have fellowship with one another and your blood will cover us from all our sins. And so, Father, we just pray you'd help us to walk in the light and follow you in, in all our ways. Lord, we, we pray that a scroll of remembrance, God, will be rolled up and that our names will be on it, that we'll be a part of the remnant of people who have said, Lord, that we will follow you. We won't follow along with the way the rest of the world is going. We will follow you. So, Lord, we thank you, God, for the great privilege we have of being called children of God, for you loving us and for you giving us second chances. And, Lord, we just thank you for that. Uh, God, I pray your blessing over each one who's uh, joined me today. Uh, Lord, may they know the sweetness of your presence. I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Well, God bless you. Congratulations on again, again on, on finishing up the book of Malachi. I'm looking forward to, uh, to jumping into the book of Revelation with you uh, tomorrow. Have a great day.